hello, hello. Okay. I really don't know how to start a webinar. Um, I always start with this hello, 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 and it sounds so fake. So I really don't know what's the best way to start a webinar. So I'll just say, hi, is everyone here? Can you hear me? All right. Am I too loud? Because I don't know, I sound a little too loud. Maybe I'm just overly excited because the kids are in bed and the husband is also tucked safely away in the bedroom. So maybe I'm overly excited because of that. Um, but if I am too loud, uh, please let me know and I'll I'll try to see how I can adjust my natural volume. <laughs> OK, so um, we are um, going to talk about the webinar for today. And this is the third time that I'm doing this webinar because Every time I do this, there is huge interest from people. And every time I do this, I um, after about a week or two, I come up with new things that I wish I had included. <laughs> so I'm also um, you know, always excited to do another version and adding all of those small bits. This is a topic that is very, very close to um, close to my heart for many many reasons and i will talk more about this as we go through um go through the go through the webinar but before i start i just want someone to type in the chat box and i see that there are about i don't know 70 80 people online so if you can just uh, um in the chat box and tell me that you can hear me all right so that i can continue um with my rant about why authority, why introductions are so important. <clears throat> OK, someone, anyone? So, so the, 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 the basic premise of this webinar is that um, it, it, yes, it matters what you do. It definitely matters what your expertise is and what your certifications are and all of those uh, random stuff that we do to satisfy our parents and ourselves. Um, and to kind of feel validated in a certain industry. But what matters more than anything else, okay. Domen can hear me, yes, yeah, okay, great. So I'm hoping, let's kick it, perfect. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste any more time talk about random stuff, okay. So my, my idea is, and the reason this topic is so important, uh, so close to my heart is that I don't know whether you guys know this, but I am, I am a qualified accountant, so I'm an accountant. And I have changed at least eight professions <laughs> ever since I qualified as an accountant. And every profession that I changed, um, or every profession that I moved into, um, I was never an expert or a guru from the very start. I'm still not an expert or a guru. And I realized that um, the way you introduce yourself, um, even if you're starting in a new discipline, it makes a lot of difference in how people see you. Yes, if you start calling yourself an expert or a guru, that kind of fails the entire purpose because um, it's like calling yourself cool. You know, um, one of my clients, she said that to me and it really stuck a chord with me. She said, you know, if you call yourself cool, that's not cool. <laughs> cool is an attitude. People should be able to see um, that you're cool or an expert. So, you know, that's what the premise of this webinar is all about. You need to be able to infuse certain elements into your introduction that that portray you as an expert or as an authority figure. You should not, yes, absolutely. Okay, you should not be able, you, should, you shouldn't have to say that you're an expert or a guru because if you have to say that, then there's something definitely wrong with the way you are positioning yourself. Okay, so I value your time like I value the last piece of candy in the house. This is like an old joke. Those of you, um, Sean and Jane, <laughs> Those of you who have uh, been on webinars with me before, you've seen this, and um, I apologize, it's an old joke. But the idea is that I'm not going to waste any time talking about random shit. If you want to know more about me, you can just know more about me from clicking the About page. I'm just going to give you three minutes to talk about me. Three minutes. If I go a second over that, just feel free to bash my ass. Then I'm going to get into meat and potatoes about 25 minutes. Uh, it normally goes above 25 minutes because when I start talking, I don't realize where the time is going. I'm going to try and keep it under that. Um, where to go from here? So I'm just going to spend five minutes to show you something that's very exciting towards the very end. I hope you find it as exciting as I do. And then we'll have a Q&A for 10 minutes. So I am not going to talk about myself, but I'm going to give you a riddle. And this riddle is, on your screen, you see four points. Three of these are truths, and one of these is a lie. So 
I once forgot my newborn in a restaurant. I'm a black belt in karate. My husband thinks I post naked pictures of myself on the internet and mosquitoes don't bite me ever. I want you to tell me in the chat box which one of you, which one of these do you think is a lie? Now, I am just for some perspective. I am not, um, I'm not a very exciting person. My life is not super exciting. So um, that's just a hint. So if you can um, just type in the chat box and tell me which one do you think is the lie? Because there is one that is a big glaring lie. Um, and the other three, as lame as they sound, are actually truths. So um, anyone? Does anyone have any answer? OK. Um, just to just to give you some perspective, um, I am going to talk, show you my bio, and I'm going to talk about my bio. But um, if this is the first time you are attending any of my webinars or you have not seen my work, uh, my name is Bushra Azhar. Um, and you can read all about my lame life story and how I keep starting in, starting and ditching one business idea after the other for, you know, I've been doing it for, for a good five, six years. Uh, and I finally found something that I find exciting and that's helping me, that's just making me money. So I'm super excited about the persuasion revolution. Um, OK, so uh, you think that number three is a lie, OK? <laughs> you, I forgot my newborn in the restaurant. That's a lie. Um, okay, you guys give me a lot credit, lot, lot of credit. Okay, so let me just tell you, all of these are wrong. I did forget my newborn in the restaurant, and as much as I hate to admit this, I did, I did, I did. I had my son who was older, and my little one was in a carry cart. So we went to a restaurant, and then we walk out, both me and my husband with my son, and we're like, "Are we missing something? Did we forget our keys?" <laughs> and then we realize that we forgot our daughter, and. To date, she has not forgiven us for this because she keeps hearing the story over and over again uh, because I just like to make make a fool of myself. Um, and yes, my husband did think that I post naked pictures of myself on the internet because the first time someone sent me money, I didn't even have a work with me page. Um, and this person just sent me money and my husband was like, why are people sending you money? What exactly are you doing on the internet? So he was like, what's going on? You got to tell me. So. Um, um, these are both, uh, incorrect. I am a black belt in karate. Um, okay. I'm not a black belt in karate. No, you should give me some credit, Jane. Okay. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Um, the, the, um, the lie here is yes, that I'm not a black belt in karate. And yes, it's a truth that mosquitoes do not, bind, uh, do not bite me ever. In fact, there are times when I see dead bodies of mosquitoes lying on my arm who, made the fatal mistake of biting me and um, lost their lives in the process. <laughs> OK, moving on. Meat and potatoes. So the idea here is that a killer authority intro is the one that combines certain psychological hooks and your own unique magic. An authority intro that works for me is not going to work for you, is not going to work for Jane, is not going to work for Sean. It, yes, the psychological hooks would remain the same, but the unique magic of each person is going to vary from one person to the other. And that's why in my private Facebook group, when I ask people or when people ask me to do uh, their um, elevator pitch makeovers, my first question is, what's your secret sauce? What's your unique authority quotient? And I'm going to talk about unique authority quotient in a bit. But in short, it's something that makes you unique as an individual, not just as an expert, but makes you unique as an individual. OK, the backbone concept of this whole uh, webinar is that persuasion is not something that one person does to the other. And I think that's why a lot of people look at persuasion in a negative light. They think that it's some sort of a sneaky technique that you, uh, some sort of a magic brain, I don't know, <laughs> hypnosis that you implement on the other person and that person would fall as on your feet as a sex slave. I don't know what people think what persuasion is. But really, persuasion is not something that one person does to another. Persuasion is what one person does to herself as a response to things that you expose them to. So your control is not on their brain. You cannot control how their brain functions. But what you can control is what you expose them to. And if you expose them to the right things, to the right stimulus, their brain will sell you to them automatically. You don't have to do the selling. And that's what this whole idea, this the whole backbone concept of my business is. Because buying 
is not a rational decision. It is not. It's a subconscious decision. And that subconscious decision happens based on the stimulus that we expose the other person to. And that's where our control ends. We can only expose them to that certain stimulus. And then the subconscious will take care of the rest of um, the persuasion sequence. Now, let's talk about intros. Um, the biggest job of an intro is to sell you before you make the offer. Now, I say that a lot of times, and I'm going to say it again, people buy you before they buy something from you. If you cannot sell yourself, you will not be able to sell your offerings. So it's a good intro, a solid intro, an authority intro will actually sell you before you even consider talking about a sales transaction. It sells you before you make the offer. An authority intro should also get your prospect super excited, you know, super, super, super excited. So just when you say those three or four lines or they read those three or four lines about you, they should get excited with anticipation. They should be in awe at your talent and your authority. If your introduction does not do that, then there is something seriously missing. You're missing out on a huge opportunity because if, again, if they don't buy you, they're not going to buy from you. And third thing, an intro should prime them for the next step and it should urge them to take that next step. What does that mean? If your intro, it only hints at the problem that you solve, but does not show them what is the path to the solution, they will just say, oh, okay, I met an interesting person and she says she's a persuasion strategist and that's it. But you need to also make sure that your authority intro gets them excited about the next step so that they are anticipating the next step in the transaction. And most importantly, and that's why a lot of people, a lot of people have it wrong. Most, most, most importantly, an intro is how people talk about you behind your back. It's your face when you don't have a face. Now, as an example, I have done this. I am um, ruthless in ensuring that people do not talk about me as a copywriter. I have refused jobs. I have refused to pitch. I have refused uh, big ass projects that were looking for a copywriter because I don't want my positioning to be that of a copywriter. It's really important for me that anyone in any business community who knows me when they talk about persuasion or psychology or sales psychology, my name should be top of the mind. And I have succeeded in this really, really, really well because even though I'm really good with words and I enjoy writing, I have done it on purpose. I don't want them to see me as a copywriter because I want them to talk about me as someone who deals in persuasion and sales psychology. Okay. Now, what is the problem with most intros out there? <laughs> okay. Um, as much as we, um, as much as we hate to admit this, the, the biggest problem with a lot of intros out there is they're either too long, they are either too short, too generic. Um, so either they go on and on and on about what the person does and how they do it, da, 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 or it's too short. It doesn't, it doesn't give them enough information. Or it is too generic. So there is no unique authority quotient. It's just very, very generic. It's, there is no secret sauce. You're like a business coach, like all the other business coaches who are helping me helping people make six figures. Everyone is doing that. What's so special about your author, what, about your intro? Or they are not prompting an action. So they say what the person does, but they don't get the other person excited about the next step. They don't get them, um, you know, uh, they, don't, they don't move them in an anticipatory phase. They're not anticipating something exciting. And last one, and which is again, a very, very common mistake. People use the same bio and same intro in every situation. So whether they are pitching themselves in a sales presentation or they are talking about themselves in a social media setting, or they are writing their guest post um, author bio, or they're introducing themselves on a webinar, they use the same bio and same introduction everywhere. That's a huge mistake. And in this webinar, I am going to show you three different ways that you can use three different bios in three different settings because each one of those intros serve a different purpose. So I'm just going to take a minute and move to the chat box to see everyone is hearing everything all right. And um, 
if there is anything missing, I just want to make sure I am on top of it. And can I also take a moment um, to request you, um, if you are enjoying the webinar so far, I would really appreciate if you could just click on the link and share it on your social media channels. Uh, tell people a little bit about me and about my crazy story. <laughs> uh, they can just come and watch the webinar either live or later. They don't have to opt in. They can just directly come to this link and watch the webinar anytime. So I would really appreciate it if you can share it with your social media channels. OK, um, mm, 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 mm. so just to be sure if people can hear me, OK, no one has responded yet. So I am, everything is peachy. Oh, yeah, great, thanks. OK, now let's look at some of the most interesting bios out there. Now, this is a bio for Dorothy. Uh, she's a farm girl from Kansas. She likes using fences as balance beams. So hanging out with her little dog, Toto, and riding in hot air balloons. You can follow her on da 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 Now, what's interesting about this bio is at least there is some secret sauce. You know, it, it has some personality, but it does not talk about the problem that Dorothy solves. It's very, very, um, it does not inspire action. It does not inspire awe. It does not get people excited. But yes, it has personality. It is infused with the personality of this particular person. So that's a good thing. So it's a, it's a half the authority bio. It's like, mm, it could use some persuasion magic, but it's not bad. So what are some must-haves for authority introductions? three psychological hooks that every single bio needs. You need to have these psychological hooks because without these, your bio will be mm, interesting, but does not inspire action, does not inspire awe. Number one, what is your unique authority quotient? I'm going to talk about this in just the next slide. Number two, why should they care? And number three, what are your reasons to believe. So these are the three psychological hooks that every authority intro, every bio, no matter what setting you are in, you need to have these. Even if you have three or four lines um, to describe what you do, these are things that are super, super, super important. OK, what is a unique authority quotient? So I am going to now talk about what a unique authority quotient is. Now, uh, when I started out, like I said in the beginning, I have experimented with many different things. I started working. I'm an accountant turned banker, turned academic, turned consultant, um, turned what? OK. Uh, turned consultant and turned online entrepreneur. So <laughs> I have done so many different things. And what I've realized is that you don't always have the right credentials for the kind of area that you're trying to tackle. So when I started consulting, started in the consulting business, I didn't have any consulting credentials. Um, what you need to understand is that the unique authority quotient does not always mean that you should have a certain qualification. You can use many different things, many different ways to position yourself as an authority. One of these is your personality. So you can bring in your personality, your full personality into your intro, into your business, and then, um, uh, th then use that personality as an authority quotient. As an example, if you are, um, I'll give you the example of Noah Kagan. If you don't know them, he runs a website called okdoc.com. I am going to show you uh, his bio in just a little bit. Um, he loves tacos. And every bio that he writes, every blog post that he writes, everything that he does, he brings in the whole concept of tacos and how he's obsessed with tacos and all. And it works. He's bringing his personality into his, um, into his business he quotient. Number two the method or process that you use. So you might be doing the same thing that everyone else and their mother are doing. It's fine. You can, you can still be offering the same service, but the only thing that's different is the method or the process that you use. As an example, I say a lot of people say that they help small businesses make a lot of money. What I do is I say I help tiny businesses. So there is that element, tiny businesses. I don't say small business. I say tiny businesses. I help tiny businesses make big bucks by using psychology of persuasion. So my unique authority quotient is the process or the method that I use. 
I'm doing the same thing that a lot of other people claim to do, but the reason I stand out in a crowded marketplace is because of the process or method that I use. Number three, authority by association. I'm going to give you an example of authority by association in just a little bit, which is simply something as simple as just because you know someone or just because you have been associated with them, them in, cer in a certain capacity, you become authority authoritative by association. I have seen people mention uh, a scholarship by Richard Branson in their bios, and that's authority by association. What you're saying is that because I had a scholarship with Richard Branson, I am you know, and he's another therefore I live by association. I'm going to give you another very interesting example of an industry. Number four, your background or your story. So if your whether or your whether or not your background is um, relative relevant to what you're doing, in a lot of cases, if your background is kind of a hero's journey or a rags to riches story or a story where you've struggled with something massive and then you emerged out of it. Um, in a certain, you know, in a certain way, even if you have no qualifications, your background or your story becomes your unique authority quotient and you can infuse it in your introduction. And last one, I saved it for the last because I think um, we need to stop paying so much attention to the qualifications or certifications because in this day and age, they are, they mean less and less. Yes, it is absolutely fantastic if you are qualified in the area, um, in the expertise, in the area that you um, uh, you are trying to establish your authority in, but isn't always a must. I'm going to give you my example. I'm not formally trained in any of the things that I have done. I I, I do consulting, um, and I'm I'm very. <laughs> I hate using the word sought after, so I'm not going to use the word sought after. I just say I'm just a very popular <laughs> uh, consultant in the region in a discipline that I'm not formally trained in. I've never taken a single course in the area where I provide consulting in. But because I've been doing it for so long and because I have learned as I went through the, you know, as I learned the ropes, um, I now am considered an expert in that area. For the persuasion revolution, I'm not formally trained in any of those persuasion techniques, but because I've been working in consulting for so long and because I've read 285 books, according to last, last count, uh, on psychology, social psychology, behavioral psycholo psychology, uh, behavioral economics, and all of those uh, areas, some of these are actually medical journals, not books. I do consider myself as someone who knows a lot about psychology of persuasion, but no, I do not have any formal qualification. So your unique authority quotient does not always have to be something that is, uh, you know, that's a piece of paper or that's a university degree. It can be any of those things. Number two. So remember, we said there need to be, needs to be three hooks uh, that make an, um, that make a good authority intro. Number one is your unique authority quotient. Number two is why should they care, and number three we're going to talk about. So number two is why should they care. Um, so the first thing is that you have something unique, whatever that something is. You have something unique. The second thing that your authority bio should have is why should that particular person care about what you're trying to say. OK, are you calling out to them? Are you saying I am whatever who works with uh, single mothers, for example, single mothers of teenagers, for example? Are you calling out to them or are you calling out to their problems? So you're not calling out to them as a demographic, but you're calling out to their problem. Are you struggling with whatever or do you see them, you know, really, really see them? <laughs> what does that mean? That means that when you talk to them, even when you're not addressing their problems or their demographics directly, what you describe, the situation that you describe or the solution that you describe is a solution that they have been yearning for all their lives. And I know it sounds um, theoretical, but I'm going to give you tons of examples. So don't worry about it for uh, right now. Let, let's just focus on what each bio has to include. So they will only care if you're either calling out to them you're calling to their problem or you really, really see them. <sighs> Number three, what are your reasons to believe? Now, reasons to believe are typically 
uh, they fall into typically three categories. Either you have qualifications in that area, which, like I said, are becoming less and less important. You have experience in that area, either personally or working with someone, even if it was a free client, or simply because you have passion in that area. Passion alone, again, I'm going to give you my example. The persuasion revolution is what it is right now is because of my own personal passion and obsession and interest in social psychology and behavioral psychology. It could have been, um, I don't know, it could have been something completely lame, but it is not. It is what it is. And I'm very happy with the way it's working is because my own personal passion is being realized into profits. So that is a huge reason to believe. And I use it as a reason to believe the fact that I'm interested in this. Let's now, uh, enough theory, let's now start showing you some of the examples of authority introductions. I'm just going to pop on over to the um, no, 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 chat box and see if you have any interesting questions uh, while I look at Ramit Sethi's caterpillar eyebrows. Um, eyebrows, <laughs> they really look like caterpillars. OK, um, so if anyone has any questions, I would love for you to drop them in the oh, 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 mm, 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 drop them in the chat chat box. Shamama, you are saying that the slides are blurry for me. I am really sorry, darling. Um, what you can do is that uh, because this is broadcasting live, sometimes um, the internet could be a little, you know, shitty. Uh, what you can do is you can maybe try and watch it on YouTube later once it has streamed in full. I think that should, I'm, I'm not, I have no, no idea. Um, okay. Um, okay. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping um, you can hear uh, me. All right. Okay. Shamama books. Yes. Oh, oh, why did you have to come up with this question? This is my favorite question. <laughs> okay. So, um, the top three books that I recommend when it comes to persuasion is um, number one, uh, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. Number two, uh, To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. Number three uh, is Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath. These three are my absolutely absolutely favorite books the books that i keep going back to over and over again but yes uh, if you want the full list i will i have the full list somewhere <laughs> i'm gonna dig it out and send it to you if you're interested okay so no more questions i am assuming everything is nice and um, lovely um everything is on track okay okay so let's now talk about from its city's eyebrows <laughs> no no, 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 no. So, OK. So I'm going to talk about um, Ramit Sethi's uh, intro. So this is the intro that he is using um, on his own website. Um, as you can see, the three red arrows, uh, the, arrow, the first arrow, uh, New York Times bestselling author, that's an RTB. That's a reason to believe. He's saying, hi, I'm, hi, I'm Ramit Sethi. You better pay attention to me because I'm a New York Times bestselling author. So he's infused it with his reason to believe. Then another reason to believe is 1,000 people read my material um, to learn how to use psychology and systems to live a rich life. Um, so so the, the, the 500,000 people uh, angle is also a reason to believe. And then the last arrow is where it, he is using his unique authority quotient, because I'm sure there are tons of other New York Times bestselling authors who have 500,000 plus people on their uh, mailing lists. But Ramit Sethi's unique authority quotient is his process. He is saying that his process is that he helps you automate your finances, making more money, or mastering your inner psychology, whatever. So he's hinting at his process while also giving you enough reasons to believe to see him as an authority figure. This is me. Um, uh, this is uh, a bio that I use for Daily Muse. Um, if you go to my website, this is not the same bio that you find. So it's different for different places. Um, so the first one, uh, which is I've been spotlighted on Forbes and Past Company, reason to believe. I use psychology of persuasion to sell your ideas, your work. So this is my process, my unique authority quotient. And the last one is you can do this by 
getting your free copy of the Nonaki Persuasion Toolkit for professionals because this was something that I wrote for Daily Muse. So it had to be something relevant for them. So um, I'm calling out to them, why should they care? Because I have a Nonaki Persuasion Toolkit for them. It's not for anyone else. It's for them because I know that they are not entrepreneurs. They are professionals. <sighs> OK. Next up. Ryan, 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 Ryan Holiday is a media strategist and prominent writer on strategy and business, uh, whatever. This is authority by association. He's saying after dropping out of college at 19 to apprentice under Robert Greene. Now, Robert Greene is a phenomenon in uh, this whole um, the manipulative persuasion, <laughs> I have to call it the icky persuasion and the manipulative persuasion uh, area. And 48 Laws of Power is a great book uh, to read if you're interested in mastering office politics, for example. <laughs> so um, he's, he's using his name to establish himself as an authority by association. And then after that, he's going on, going on and giving it another reason to believe, saying he became the director of marketing at uh, American Apparel, which is great. And another reason to believe is that his campaigns have been used in, as case studies. So his whole bio is uh, sprinkled with different reasons to believe into why people should listen to him or care about what he has to say. Tim, Tim Ferriss is using what I call the theory of equivalence in his bio what does that mean it means that instead of saying that i am the i am an adventurer and i like to test new things and i'm you know i'm an action taker he is using a line which someone else used for him but it says tim is indiana jones for the digital age this is using equivalence to establish authority so you are going on you, you're saying something like um, instead of saying i am you know he's adventurous or he likes to try new things just summed it up by drawing parallels with um, something else that everyone is um, everyone is familiar with. Okay. Um, uh, the other thing, uh, so again, another reason to believe most innovative business people. He is his book is sold in two thirty five plus languages. New York Times bestseller. All of these are reasons to believe that he's sprinkled throughout his bio. Next up. I gave you this example before. This is the example of Noah Kagan uh, of um, 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 okdoc.com. And as you can see, um, I, hear, I share secrets about the best ways to write a cold email, business books I've read, memorable experiences, how to deal with depression. So many different things that, he, that he's doing, growing email list to 20,000 20, plus, and how to make it easy for others to say yes. So he is hinting at his process. He is um, talk, uh, talking about authority by association, but he's doing it in a very uh, kind of reverse psychology way. He's saying, before that, I was a cubicle monkey at Intel. So he's not saying that I'm proud of this. He's actually uh, establishing authority by association, but doing it in such a way which makes him sound cooler. <laughs> okay. Paul Jarvis, web designer, best-selling author of Adventure. Um, he is uh, first reason to believe, best-selling author, multi-million dollar businesses. Uh, his clients include Yahoo, Mercedes-Benz, Microsoft, all of these uh, companies. So it's, it's obviously someone that you should pay attention to. Alexandra Frenzen, one of my favorite authors. She writes pure poetry. I love her words. Um, so she's describing herself as an author and communication experts who helps creative people become clear and confident writers. So very, very clear creative people, and she helps them become confident and clear writers. This is what her core area of expertise is. But her speciality is to help get find the right words to get noticed, get hired, and get others excited about your ideas. I think that's brilliant. And then she is going on and giving you more reasons to believe in why you should listen to her. By the way, this is also her bio on Daily News. She also writes for Daily News. So this is her bio from Daily News. Now, I now that I've given you three psychological hooks to use in your authority introductions, and I have shown you many different examples of many different introductions that people have used with great success. 
I am going and going to talk about three different types of authority introductions. And I'm going to show you examples and samples of how you can, um, you know, how you can craft the same for you. The first one is how to craft um, an authority introduction for a free client call. The second one is how to craft an authority intro for a webinar. And third one is how to craft an authority intro for a guest post author bio. Now you can use any one of these um, for your about page or anything else that you want. But right now I'm sharing for these three different uh, areas because these three different areas have different needs. First of all, free client call. Now, the whole purpose of making an introduction in a free client call is that you need they need to see you, like you, and see you as being on their side. So you're trying to build a one-on-one -on -one rapport in a free client call, which is not the case, by the way, when you're trying to do a webinar. If you're trying to do a webinar and you use the authority bio that you should use for a one-on-one -on -one rapport, it's going to fall flat on its face because Hey, I'm talking to a screen, you know. Um, I can't build a rapport with a screen as hard as I try, and I consider myself pretty sexy, but, uh, but um, trying to build a rapport with the screen that shows my shadow is not going to work. So, um, so <laughs> the idea behind crafting an authority intro for a free client call is to make sure you build one-on-one -on -one rapport. And the structure that you can follow don't just pick up the phone and start talking about them or saying something like, hey, how are you? Very excited to talk to you. Why? No. You need to introduce yourself with authority, even if they know you, even if they have already interacted with you. It's super important for them to see you as an authority figure and like you. So the sequence goes like this. I am whatever. I do this for certain type of people through whatever your process is. Here's why me and no one else. And Tell me all about you. This is the sequence that you are trying to really, uh, uh, that you should follow if you are, uh, if you want to craft an authority intro for a free client call. Let's put that to test. I am a persuasion strategist. I work with tiny businesses less than 300K in revenue to help them make more money by using psychology of persuasion in their communications on their websites and in their client dealings. I have worked with 750 clients. By the way, this is old. Now my number is about 1,100 clients. Yeehaw! I have been featured in Forbes and all of those places. I have worked with companies like Unilever, Pepsi Cola, and Ernst Young International. So, as you can see, this is um, this is an authority intro that takes like I don't know 30 seconds to blur it out, but that would really help them see you. Obviously, you don't have to say it the way I'm saying this, it has to be more conversational and you have to infuse, infuse your own personality is to at least get these things out so they can begin to see you as someone that they can trust and like and do business with. Next up, how to craft an authority introduction for webinars. Now in a webinar, the authority intro will be similar, similar to a free call. But the whole idea of a webinar intro is that they should begin to see you as an authority and a problem solver, especially if you're going to make a pitch at the end of the webinar. If you don't introduce yourself as an authority right off the bat and you don't you don't continue doing it through the webinar, don't expect people A, to stick around to the end of the webinar and B, do not expect them to buy from you. As in, if you look like some lame ass loser, why would they buy from you? You know, then A, not, they're not gonna stick around. And even if they do stick around, they'll probably be playing on a mobile or just, you know, doing random stuff and definitely won't buy from you. So it's really important to use an authority intro, which is similar to the free call. And I'm gonna show you examples. Um, and then you, they need, you need to get them to like you and trust you in different ways. I'm going to show you a few examples of how you can do that. And then you need to get them to see you as a problem solver. So there are three things that you need to make sure you do when crafting an authority intro for a webinar. Put it to test. So 60 seconds of authority intro, which is similar to a free call. So uh, I am whoever, I work with this, uh, whatever, you know, just take 60 seconds and just please, no more than that, just 60 seconds to give an authority intro similar to a free call and then get them to like you and trust you for two minutes. Now, 
what this what is this this is this could be anything it could be a personal secret it could be an embarrassing story about you it could be fun trivia about you it could be something similar to what i did three truths and a lie uh, three three truths and a lie you could use an icebreaker you can share something about your business but don't flaunt at this point but only do it for 2 minutes you've spent so far 3 minutes in not only establishing yourself as an authority but also getting them to like you and trust you and see you as a real person with a real personality and not a robot that's the idea behind a webinar oh sorry okay so a total intro of 3 minutes and once you've done that your unique authority quotient and your reasons to believe should be sprinkled throughout the webinar so if you are talking about um i don't know if you're talking about a case study you can say something like as you know i work with some of my clients when i work with my clients this is the kind of results that i get them and one of my clients went from i don't know broke on the road to making six figures in six months something like that so you're sprinkling your uaqs and your reasons to believe throughout the webinar if you really want to see want them to see you as an authority by the end of the webinar who last how to write a kick ass author bio or um guest author bio or an author blurb now this is different from the first two bios that we looked at because here um you are using someone else's platform you it's not your own platform so those people are not on your own website you're probably at someone else's platform and the biggest uh, purpose of writing this bio is to get them so intrigued and so excited that they clicked over to your website if you can't get them excited and you can't get them intrigued and they don't click over to your website there is no point in writing the guest post i have had experiences where i got featured in big ass websites like ink.com in the very beginning and i had like thousands of shares but no one clicked over to my website because the way the author bio is uh, featured in an ink.com article it doesn't show it's just a picture and my name so there is no way for me to hook people and get them intrigued and excited uh, so they click over to my website you know unless your even if your article is absolutely fantastic it's very hard to get them to come over just from article alone you need to do that job through your author bio so how can you do that define the pain point of your ideal buyer and then ask a question that brings it to the surface i'm going to give you an example don't don't worry and then introduce yourself as the miracle cure to that problem and then link to your most relevant opt-in offer so three parts to a guest author bio if you want people to click over okay example ask them a question that brings their pain points to the surface you know that feeling when it seems like you're digging a never ending hole with no end in sight and holding on to that shitty client because that's the only one you have that's an example don't use the word shitty if you're writing for ink.com i am simon and i help newbie entrepreneurs get better and nicer clients and make bucket loads of money and i do it with a smattering of humor and tough love so you ask the question to bring their pain points to the surface you position yourself as a miracle cure and then you share a relevant opt-in offer and link to them check out my get nicer clients cheat sheet that shows you 10 steps you can take right now to ditch the nasty and embrace the nice if you see an author bio like that tell me honestly would you not want to click over and see what this person has to say because this is like mm i love what this person has to say i'm really super excited because he seems like a cool guy and that's the whole idea behind um writing a guest author bio okay so uh let me just take a look uh uh ha look at the questions um mm, 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 okay do you have an example that doesn't have so many great references uh actually when i started out i didn't have any of these great references so my author bio from the very beginning maybe i what i will do is maybe i will uh dig it out from the time when i just started and i didn't have any of these credentials um and put it up uh link it in the same blog post for you to see because like i said even if you don't have these great references you can use other things as your unique authority quotient you can use the fact like i said 
I, I still remember I use the reference that I've been obsessed with buyers, uh, buyer psychology and sales psychology and psychology of persuasion for so many years. And I've used this. I have used this in my authority introduction and it works. You don't always have to have these great credentials. You just need to find something that's unique about you or your process or your personality. OK, Marilyn, it seems like personality is more important online than qualifications today. What are the folks without extrovert personalities? Any reasons to believe seems um, OK, so uh, so first question, first question, if you are if you're not an extrovert, um, it's fine. It's absolutely OK. You can actually uh, now. Now, there are two things. There are two aspects to this answer. First of all, are you an extrovert and uh, targeting extroverts, or are you an extrovert targeting introverts, or are you an introvert targeting extroverts? You know, this is really important because what you need to speak to them in the language or in the tone that works for them, ideally it should work for you and for them. But sometimes, if you and your ideal buyer are two completely different personalities, and if you have to make a choice, I would recommend that you make a choice to talk to them in the tone that they prefer. So this is, you know, this is this is the answer that you need to kind of ask ideal buyer is do they appreciate do they appreciate in your face humor? Because my ideal buyer do uh, does. They they love the fact that I'm so open and in your face and the humor and I use all these curse words all the time in all my client interactions and they love it. But if that's not the case with you, um, you know, you, that's what you need to figure out what sort, what kind of interaction uh, they want to see. And the other thing you said was reasons to believe seems um, um, uh, you're saying the reasons to believe seem close to qualifications. Uh, reasons to believe could be qualifications, but they don't always, they aren't always qualification. And my example that I gave you, 285 books that I've read, it's not a qualification. It is not an experience. It's just something that is my passion. So sometimes reasons to believe could be something as simple as the fact that you worked with, I don't know, 150 clients, or you have turned around lives of, I don't know, 25 women from rehab to, you know, so reasons to believe are not always qualifications. They are things that make that person change their perception about you. OK, so you're saying that you don't like Simon's bio. <laughs> then you're probably not Simon's ideal buyer. You know, I think this is one of the things that we really need to understand. And I um, uh, and I love that Domen, you know, said that he would hire him. I would hire him on the spot because for my consulting business, I deal with a lot of nasty clients, and I wish someone could tell me, give me a shortcut to get rid of all those nasty clients. Um, so again, it probably does not resonate with you because you don't, or you haven't dealt with a lot of nasty clients, and you're very fortunate if you haven't. Um, and I think it's what is really important when it comes to introductions is. Uh, who your ideal buyer is, who you are talking to. If you're not talking to the right person or you're talking to the person in the wrong tone, um, you will be missing out. Uh, one more thing that I have to tell you before I move on to the next step, um, and I think it will answer questions from all of you. Uh, I have a corporate blog uh, where I uh, my, my ideal buyer is basically consultants. So I'm talking to consultants and business professionals in the area where I provide consulting in. The tone of that corporate blog is not my tone. I cannot talk to them in the tone that I'm talking to you right now. The tone that I use for them is very corporate -y, to the point. It's not in your face because those people are not looking for that kind of an interaction. My, my, my authority bio for my corporate blog, my authority bio for my consulting, for my LinkedIn profile is very different from what it is uh, that I have on the persuasion revolution. So a lot of it depends on who you are talking to and what kind of, uh, um, what kind of an interaction they're looking for. OK. So where to go from here? So this is my allow me to give you two minutes of uh, pitch. Um, now that we've talked about authority introductions, and I'm hoping that you found this as useful as uh, I, you know, as fun as I had uh, doing this. Uh, now that you have your authority introduction, or you have a fairly good idea of how you want to position yourself in front of your ideal buyer, the logical next step 
would be to um, put together your about page. Now, I know that a lot of people struggle with putting together their about pages because they don't know how to find a balance between authority and personality. So if you infuse too much personality, you would lose authority. If you infuse too much authority, you sound stiff and therefore lose personality. Um, there's also uh, people don't know how to seem likable. They don't know how to structure their about pages. So I have right underneath this video, you will see the short link, which is a persuasion quickie. I have a mini training on how to put together a personality infused and compelling about pages. It's for $19. And I've had so far about 700 and last count, 25, 26 people who've already gone through this training and they love how easy it is to put together their about pages. I give you content templates um, that you can use and swipe um, and just you know fill it, fill it in with your details. So you can create your own about page. If you're interested in something like that, you can click on over to the link right below this video and check it out. That's all from me today. Um, if you have any questions, I am <laughs> okay. I am right here. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer them. Uh, if you have any, have any questions at any time, even after you watch this uh, this webinar, because it's going to be here on the same very page as long as you want. It, uh, you know, you can come back and watch it any time. If you have, have any questions, just hit me up. Let me know. I am going to ask you. Um, if you enjoyed this webinar, I would really appreciate if you could share it with your social media channels. Um, Marilyn has a question. She's saying, that helps my ideal client could be a mixed introvert, extrovert. They're creatives, big ideas. They would probably most want an extroverted feel. Um, yes, uh, I, I think um, uh, you need to kind of sit down, maybe also interview a few people, or just ask a few people who worked with you in the past and see what is it about your tone or about your positioning that they like or they don't like? You know, just ask them this one question, you know, uh, when you look at my positioning, when you look at my bio, when you look at my brand, what is it that you like and what is it that you don't like? It will give you a fairly good idea of how people want you to project yourself in your work or in your brand. OK, um, I think we are done here. Um, I am hoping you guys find it found it useful. And uh, like I said, I am trying I'm going to try and dig out my own bio from the old days when I didn't have the right credentials um, and see if I can find it and I can link it to the same blog post so that you can use it for inspiration. Um, thank you so much, Erin. I am so glad that you enjoyed it. Um, I will close it now. And uh, I will see you next Tuesday in the next webinar. Thank you so much, people. Bye-bye.